so we're back at it again uh, I think for the purpose of the video this is going to be the fourth or fifth segment and uh, what we're doing now is we're going to try to get this coosa cut out uh, in the earlier segment you've seen that we had made our template and we had fine-tuned the template uh, to fit just exactly the way we wanted it to fit. And we've moved our CUSA board uh, over here to some saw horses that we've got. And uh, if y'all had never seen this before, well, let me just show you what it is. It's, uh, it's impregnated, if y'all look real close. It's impregnated with fiberglass. Uh, it's lighter than plywood. Uh, and it's stronger than plywood. It's got uh, mats of fiberglass woven into the material, or impregnated into the material. Uh, and it's a polystyrene, I think, if I'm not mistaken, uh, it's a polystyrene foam board. Uh, it's waterproof. If we ever do have the same kind of issues that we had with the uh, water tightness of the fiberglass failing, this material is impermeable to water. Uh, it won't rot, won't grow mold. Uh, I guess this is the latest and the greatest, and that's what we're going to use. Now, with all that being said, it's probably the most expensive thing that you can use. There may be something more expensive out there, but uh, it's fairly expensive. So before I started uh, cutting on this, I done a layout. I laid out every piece and how much CUSA board that I would need in the dimensions. I laid that on a sheet of paper and done my calculations. This sheet, I'm going to be able to get all the stringers and the transom built out of this one sheet. Uh, and then the deck and the knees and some of the other amenities that go on the boat will come out of two other sheets that I purchased. So, I'm going to take and uh, get this template laid out. Now, I've heard, uh, well, I've heard both ways. I've heard that it's fairly easy to cut with a carbide tooth jigsaw and I've got a piece of junk jigsaw and I've bought a blade and we're going to try that and I hope it works. I also heard that the dust from Coosa board is nasty. Itchy. Uh, I guess it's worse than fiberglass. So we're going to put on some protective gear uh, I'm outside, we got plenty of ventilation, but I'm still going to wear a mask. Put some gloves on, I've got long sleeve shirt on. We're going to see how it goes. Uh, but the first thing that I want to do is to get this template locked in place and make sure that it don't move. We're going to try to mark or scribe the CUSA and then we'll try to cut it and see how it fits. Now, I've got a couple of these quick clamps. That's what I'm going to try to use. I want to make sure that I'm just exactly where I want to be because, like I said, I want to, I want to absolutely duplicate what we've worked so hard to try to get here. I can get this thing. Yeah, I can get it straightened out. There we go. We're going to clamp down this end. I don't want it to move at all. Then I'm going to come out here and I'm going to line this up. We're going to clamp that down. When I cut this, I'm going to leave the line because I've got this tight. We're going to get in there. We're going to go on. Okay. Got it marked. Let's move our template. So I've got this jigsaw. It ain't much. Hopefully it's going to do the job. If not, it might get retired. Uh, 
they can be working. So, <clears throat> there's a gentleman online, uh, if you're going to work with fiberglass, if you're going to uh, work on a boat, there's a guy that's a professional. His name's Andy, I think. Boat Works Today, I think is the name of his site. Uh, he said that if you get a carbide blade with this kufa, it'll work a whole lot better. I'm hoping he's right. Uh, he said that uh, the regular bimetal blades and stuff like that, he said this stuff will just eat the teeth off of it. So I've purchased uh, one of these Bosch uh, carbide blades, supposed to have carbide teeth on it somehow, some way. Uh, so I hope that it, uh, I hope it's magic. So I'm going to get my mask on and we're going to try to cut this and uh, see what we end up with. That wasn't too bad. It wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be with the carbide blade. Thank you, Andy. It cut smoothly. Not fast, but smoothly. I handled this stuff earlier. The smooth part, the top side, the face of this material, it don't bother you at all. But the edges, where the little fiberglass is sticking out, It'll eat you alive. So, I'm gonna keep my gloves on, and uh, we're gonna move this stuff inside, and uh, pick it up there. Any of you guys that's ever done this YouTube, and I know it's difficult to get this camera moved around and get everything set up to where you can, you can actually show the folks what you're trying to do, but I think we've got it. Let's take a look. Okay, so hopefully we can see. We've got it in here. I'm going to line it up at the front end and then we'll be back. Alright, we got it aligned. Let me get my shims, see where we're at on that. We'll get these big gloves off a minute. Oh man, we are right there. Oh, there's another shim back there. Let me check the front. So we're perfect in the back here. It's absolutely perfect. Evidently, I left a little bit of a hump on the front side, so I'm going to have to adjust that. Same process we've done before. I'm going to get my Sharpie and run it down through there and see where my high spot's at. Uh, like I said, the back is dead on. I am a sixteenth out on the front, so it ain't going to take much. Alright, so like I said, we're going to do the same thing we've done before. Uh, move you around here. We're going to take our Sharpie and we're going to scribe right to the hole line, right where the stringer meets the hole, and we're going to find our high spot. Come right down through there. That's tough to light, and I know it's tough. It may make you think you're going to break it. Let me get you in here close so you can see this. If you'll look right here, and I know it's hard to see, but you see that little belly that's in that where I scribed that line with a hole, wherever that little imperfection was at, there's material below the line. So I'm going to go over there and sand that out. We'll come back, refit it, and uh, see if we can, where we can uh, maybe get some peanut butter under it. So far everything I've done with this Kusa as far as having to work with it uh, it's been great. I mean uh, 
it didn't take much at all to remove the amount of material that I needed to to make it fit I think and it's still a little high still a little high so we're going to keep going back and forth with it till we get it to where it needs to be but I don't want to bore you so I'll come back in a minute I think some of the adjustment that we're having to make here is because we used like a half inch template uh, and this particular uh, piece of cooser for the stringer is three quarter so we're tightening it up but there again I'm happy I'd much rather want to you know have to remove a little bit of material a little bit at a time than to put it in there and have a big old gap all right let's try it again Guys, we're finally where we need to be. I'm satisfied with what we got. Let's go over here and look at this line. Let's take a look at this transition. It's not going to take a whole lot to glue that down. There's just enough room in there uh, to put some peanut butter. Now the hull tapers, so the gap's going to be a little, a little wider on the other side. But we've worked back and forth until we got exactly what we wanted. It's not pressing on the hull anywhere. There ain't going to be no hard spots. Uh, we've got the hull position. I think we're ready to, to mix us up some thickened resin and uh, stick this thing down. I'm going to clean this up. We're going to have to wipe it down good with acetone and get it all cleaned up real good. And, uh, and uh, then we'll mix some resin up and go from there. All right, guys. Uh, we're getting ready to set this stringer. Um, I've turned the heat on. We got to have uh, the temperature that we need for the resin. My particular resin is around 70 degrees. Um, I've had the heat on and off out here all day, so uh, it's well above 70 degrees. I've I'm using a two to one epoxy. I've got my epoxy and my hardener. I've got it measured out correctly, two to one. And I've got a cup that I'm going to pour it in. Now the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to mix my epoxy. And I don't know whether it matters or not, but where I cut this kusa board on the bottom side, and I know I'm getting ready to set it in a bed of epoxy, but before I do that, I'm going to take and brush some epoxy along the bottom to prevent it from pulling the epoxy. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to thicken the epoxy that goes on that I'm bedding it down with. Uh, I don't want it to pull any of the uh, resin out of the thickener and and create something that would. So just to make sure. And this is probably overkill, you guys are probably laughing at me. But I'm going to take and I'm going to mix my epoxy and I'm going to paint the cut edge of this CUSA board. Then I'm going to go back and I'm going to start adding Cabocil into my epoxy uh, and create a thickened uh, epoxy that I can bed the stringer in with. I took a piece of sandpaper I went across the surface that we're working on down in the bottom of the boat and then I took um, acetone excuse me acetone and I wiped it all down it's perfectly clean uh, so we should have some tooth there from the sandpaper it's clean uh, it's getting ready to happen so uh, wish me luck we're gonna try to get this all done like I said, I'm going to, to reiterate, I'm going to mix, paint, uh, go back, uh, thicken, bed, 
we'll set the stringer in and uh, then we'll wait. Alright, so I've just put my hardener in the resin in this cup. I'm going to stir it for a couple minutes. We're going to make sure it gets mixed up real well. And uh, I'm going to mix thoroughly. With small bites like this, I'll have a couple minutes, so it'll be mixed more than thoroughly. Alright, so I've got this little uh, brush. You can buy these up there at Harbor Freight. They're fairly cheap. You can buy them in a big pack. This is a, I think you call it a chip brush. Uh, so we're going to use it uh, to paint uh, a little bit of this unthickened resin on the stringer. Like I said, I'm probably just being paranoid, but if it soaks up some of this resin, then that'll be okay. It don't look like it's soaking up much of it. This is supposed to be a closed cell material. Uh, we'll see. It's fume silica. Uh, it's a very light, fluffy, powdery substance as you can see on the picture. I'm going to have to turn the fan off on this heater uh, to to mix this in and you got to move real slow and you want to wear a dust mask. Uh, this is uh, and it's, I, I, there's nothing I've ever seen that's any lighter than this. Uh, flyer ain't got nothing on this. This is uh, I could put this bucket up in front of that little fan on that heater and it just blow it empty but I mean and it don't weigh anything but it's up to there so but anyway I'm gonna mix this in you gotta sort of do it by eye. I use a tablespoon and just add it and mix it and add it and mix it until we get the consistency we want we want a pretty firm consistency to bed a stringer in so uh, let's uh, let me get that mixed up and then I'll be back with you we're getting closer that's closer to what we need In fact, I think that's where it needs to be. So I'm going to run it down the hole here and, and then we'll set the stringer back in. Yeah, as you can see that we've got our we've got our thickened resin, it's like a paste, uh, running down where we're going to place our stringer. Uh, this epoxy is pretty forgiving. It seems to have a long working time, but if you was using a polyester or vinyl ester resin you gotta be a little quicker than I'm having to be here uh, and some epoxies may set quicker than others uh, but we've got it laid out I didn't mix enough to start with and I had to go back and mix some more not unusual uh, they say us amateurs uh, don't realize how much material it takes you know so <clears throat> but anyway so we got our we got our bedding now and uh, I'm gonna take to make sure that I place it in the right spot and put my, put my little, little thing back in there. And, uh, make sure that we get them. I hope, I hope that the, the mud's where it needs to be. Here in the front. You gotta double check everything. When this sets, it's either you finished or you're back to square one. So, as you can see, I've got some squeeze out. I'm gonna see if, uh, well, the first thing I'm gonna do. Is I'm gonna get those clamps that I used earlier 
and I'm gonna clamp that in position so it's not moving around so I won't knock it out of place so let me grab some clamps in make sure I'm holding it down here everything's tied over there it's firm okay well let's talk about what we got so the spoon thing worked great where I had enough squeeze out I was sort of taking care of uh, uh, two birds with one stone <clears throat> where I didn't have enough squeeze out of course the spoon knocked down and I had squeeze out everywhere so I've got I've got a good surface I've got a good bond going uh, but where I had enough squeeze out the spoon actually made a transition that my glass could lay up against. Let's, well, let's take a look at it. Like I told y'all before, I'm not uh, I'm not trying to pretend like I know everything, but that looks nice. And then down here, uh, you can see I had squeeze out. You can see my, my little spoon smoothed it out. I'm not going to have no stuff sticking up, but uh, uh, I might have to go back there and add a little more peanut butter to get the transition I want to lay the cloth uh, when I go to tab this in. Well, guys, we've got our stringer uh, bedded in. We've got it clamped in place. We're going to wait for it to set up. Uh, we're going to continue this procedure for the back, for the other stringer, We'll do the stringer in the middle, and uh, we're moving forward in the, to get this project completed. But at any rate, I, I'm really I'm happy uh, the way this worked out. So maybe the next time you come back, we may be bedding in some more stringers, uh, or we may be doing some tab up, and we'll look at doing that and see see if I get as lucky. Uh, tabbing these things up as as I have on bedding them in. So until next time, this is Brian with Side Outfitters. Y'all have a good day.